The reviews for Need for Speed Payback have been absolutely amazing, is what I'd like to say, but that's not the case. They've been pretty downright poor. Yes, this is me kind of moaning a little bit about the fact that the reviews have been so poor on a game that is hoping and trying its best to be better than it has been in the longest time. And in my opinion, it is doing it. Is it perfect? Does it deserve a perfect bloody 10 shining stars everywhere from every reviewer everywhere? No, I don't think so, but it downright doesn't deserve a lower score than the previous game, which to most people couldn't even play properly due to the handling model being so all over the bloody place. In this video, we're going to be looking into the reviews and talking about why I think they are absolutely useless in helping any fan or anyone looking into Need for Speed Payback. As someone that absolutely trashed Need for Speed back in the day for being soulless and empty, to it now being more and more improved every single game, I think I have a stance on this. The very first thing you're going to notice after reading through all of these reviews or watching the videos or however you consume them, the very first thing you will notice is that anything you actually care about isn't mentioned. We're talking about the fact that remember how online freedom is not in the game? One of the big writers actually wrote about this. Nobody else touched it. This is a very important aspect of Need for Speed and it's missing and only one of them added it in on this cheap line that looks like it was added in the last second. So what I'm going to do now is list actual points that a Need for Speed player would like to hear. Has the handling been improved? I can say from playing the game, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will agree with me on this. The handling has been improved overall. It's not in the point of where in the last game it would automatically kind of lose control of the car and take control of the car itself. You do the full handling. It's like 2015, but heavier and fixed. That's pretty much it. What about grip versus drift? It's too early for me to jump to a complete conclusion right now, but I know for a fact that the grip and drift battle continues because drift does have a massive advantage. Drift, for example, you can gain speed through the corners. Grip loses speed through the corners. I'm hoping this is something that's fixed very soon because grip should technically be better than drift in general, but it's not that case, and I wouldn't care if they're balanced out. It's need for speed. Why does this matter? A lot of damn players want to play grip. We don't want to drift around every corner with criteria and drifting IGN. IGN, I would like to let you know that the Criterion Drifting, a lot of us actually can't stand. But you guys keep saying the handling's great because it's like the Criterion. No! How's the progression? It's an interesting topic because up until actually recently, the progression was great in my opinion. It progressed well. You stayed in your lower end car for quite a while and it would have taken you a couple of days playtime, not actual, actual playtime, but you know, playing it for a few days, before you can unlock something like the hyper cars that are available in the game, which are a nice edition. But recently, Ghost have actually doubled the payouts that you receive from events. But this happened because of the idiotic reviewers that don't want us to play a game when you have to remember the fact that the game is supposed to last us for two years before we get another one. Yes, there's going to be content updates, but the fact that I'm going to have the best cars already, I actually have all of the hyper cars right now. I think it's a little bit silly, don't you? In my opinion, the money should be reverted back to how it was if in some areas improved by about 25% over what the original numbers were. Were. The thing that needs to be fixed is the part tokens and we need to get more of them easier. Once they fix what parts are actually given at the end of events and when you spin, then that's fine. Money didn't need to be increased. What about online free roam? This is one of the major points. Because of the fact that the last game only had online free roam because it was an always online game and they wanted the whole seamless world thing, that has been stripped and it's obvious that people, oh, they didn't have enough time or they just completely forgot or they were just completely oblivious to the fact that online free roam should have been in there. Hopefully it's coming. It needs to come. Online free roam is what a lot of us do that don't like competitive and there's a lot of us. What about free roam cops? Cops have also been improved massively. They are much, much more aggressive. I would say close to rival style aggression, but the problem is they are only tied to events. You cannot get them outside of events. You have these things called bait crates, which activate police chases, but they are definitely not a good replacement for free roam cops. Free roam cops allows you to drive absolutely anywhere, try some new hiding places. Free roam cops is missing, should be there. I do like the cops, they have been improved, but free roam cops not available and that's a bit unfortunate. Personally, I don't really care too much, 
but I know a lot of people really care about this. See, reviewers, that's what you should be doing. Heat levels. The police aren't tied to a heat level in this game. How it works is later in the game, you get different times cops after you. Early in the game, you don't. It's That's pretty much all it is. I'd like heat levels to return and be based maybe on performance or based on how long I've had the police after me, obviously. What about the day and night cycle? There's a day and night cycle, as people requested. Probably one of the most requested features of 2015 is to have a proper day and night cycle. It's in the game. Daylight's night. Nice. Night times nice. Whatever. There you go. What about manual transmission? Manual transmission. It's in the game. If you like manual, Merry Christmas. There you go. Has drag racing been improved? In my opinion, it has and hasn't at the same time. It does feel a little bit hit or miss. Sometimes it just doesn't work as you'd expect. It is very difficult if you put it onto easy or you're, you know, 20 levels above what the recommendation, then you're going to have no problem. The drag races do feel a little bit short and kind of useless at times, but I'm glad they're there. I'm hoping they improve it in the future. But I'd like to say whose idea was it to have circuit races in drag cars? not particularly the best idea unless it was like a long kind of highway run i do think because drag has different races other than just drag racing they should have named it the speed spec similar to how it was in pro street in where that was just the speed spec because they do actually have the fastest cars in there i tried to go it in race and i also tried it in drag and obviously drag was faster you should hope what about those awful crash cameras crash cameras return in the free roam you crash and it does this cool little camera and then you can drive away for the most part i actually really like it it's the best they've done in a while you do have a little bit of a crash crash cool camera if you want it but you can carry on driving while that camera happens when it comes to races though it needs fixing especially off-road races you crash and then it's like oh i can drive away from this this is this is a nice light crash no you start to drive away and it puts you back 10 minutes down the road. No, thank you. Stop. Can you take down other racers? Like a lot of people, I don't want takedowns of other racers. That's just frustrating. Thankfully, you can't take down other racers other than hitting them and maybe they hit a wall or something, but you can battle back and forth, but you can't properly just take someone down burnout style. Thank the Lord. No punto, no party. Mate, where's the punto at? What about the storyline? It's a little bit cheesy here and there, but Need for Speed has always been cheesy. I do think this is possibly the cheesiest cheese ever on Need for Speed history. Some of the characters I really began to like. Lena Navarro is possibly one of my favorite villains of the Need for Speed franchise. And then we've also got Marcus, which is the gambler, and he is a cool character too. But the main characters do seem very, oh, let's go, let's go for a ride, kids. They need to all be shot at the beginning of the next game. A lot of characters from the previous Need for Speeds are actually returning in this game, or at least mentions of them. So I'm hoping that in the future, we're gonna see a lot of them return. I'm talking about the ultimate fan service Need for Speed, is building up. How are the hypercars in Need for Speed? If you didn't know, the last game didn't really have hypercars, and this game is kind of accounting more for the most wanted, the carbon era, where the games didn't have many hypercars either. It had one or two, but in the underground days, we had bloody none. So how do hypercars fit in on this game? Well, they actually fit pretty well. The only problem is, I got it within five minutes of finishing the game. Stop giving me so much money. Stop to revert the update. Did they add any more muscle cars? There's a lot more classic muscle cars in here, which I'm very thankful for. In fact, they actually improved how many cars there are overall, including SUVs, pickup trucks. They're trying to make it much more varied. It's very welcome, and that's why I'm kind of welcoming the hypercars as well, but I would like to see a little bit more of some of the classes. It does seem like a lot of supercars and hypercars are kind of dominating the list. We need to see a big boost on some of the lower-end cars and how many there are. What about the map? How are the environments? i got to tell you, this is one of the best maps in Need for Speed history, I would say. The amount of variation, the city is big, there's a big desert, there's kind of swooping roads, highways, drifty mountains, pretty much everything you could think of. It has an airfield, which was a massive requested thing. I'm just hoping that in the future, the only thing is honestly missing for me is a racetrack embedded in it. That would be pretty cool. Add it in with online free roam. Actually, don't. Just add online free roam and then do the map. That, do the, what? Most importantly of all, how's the customization? Dear reviewers, you didn't mention this whatsoever. None of you did. This is the, a very crucial point and a massive point that was missing on most 2012. Customization is back in payback and it's better than it was in the last game. Is it to the level of most wanted? I'd say probably better. There's not as many wings, but a lot of the wings in Most Wanted I kind of hated. Let's just say that the, the customization overall is improved. And the last game you had limitations. Those limitations have been lifted so you can mix and 
Anderson, match body kits on some cars, the introduction of backs, neons, tire smoke, custom horns. There's a lot in here and I'm very happy it is. I'm very thankful it is. But again, no reviewer touched on customization because they're blithering idiots. Now, obviously, I can't make this video review as such and not mention the fact that the game has microtransactions. A lot of people are saying that it actually unbalances the game and makes it easy if you buy microtransactions. Well, personally, after buying about £40 worth of transactions at the end of the game, I can say that I got about $600,000 in-game which really isn't a lot. That's since the update anyway. You can now make about 65,000 for a two minute race, which to me means the microtransactions are pretty much pointless. For me to approve of microtransactions in a game, there has to be two main factors and that, that they do not unbalance the game and they do not make it a massively unfair advantage to those that do pay. For example, locking things behind levels, that sort of thing, so you still have to progress. And number two, they actually have to provide something for it. So for example, in GTA Online, all the updates have been free for the few years that it began three, maybe four years. GTA Online was a pretty balanced game and it provided updates. And to me, Payback does those things incredibly well. It's so hand-holding, even more so now giving you enough to buy a Skyline every four minutes. And we know that Ghosts are definitely going to provide updates to this game. They already have, in fact, improved the game post-launch. In the previous game, we got Speedless, Manual Transmission, Drag Races, and so much more. In this game, I expect to get even more so because if we don't, then in the next game, I'm not going to approve of those micro transactions. A game that does them really bad, for example, is Forza in where it provides microtransactions a little bit later down the day. One thing I've noticed, just to kind of go off topic a little bit, if you put microtransactions in your game post-launch, like a couple of weeks later, then reviewers don't mention it. So Need for Speed, you might want to do that in the future. But Forza doesn't provide any new content whatsoever from these updates. It does things, maybe like updating how many different types of lobbies there are online, but those lobbies were already there in the previous game, in the previous game, in the previous game, and they just decide, oh, well, let's hold them back and load them out after launch. The Forza's in the bad book for microtransactions anyway, but you get the idea. I'm okay with them as long as they're done well. The thing that really needs work is the slot machine system. I like the card system. I might be one of the only ones that really, really likes the card system because of the fact that you get your car to level 18, which is the maximum cards on each of them. And then after that point, if you're really investing in that car, you can get a brand synergy across the board, basically trying to get the same parts across the board. You get a bonus for whatever it is being jump, nitrous, speed, acceleration. Depending on what manufacturer you go with, you get a bonus. Not only that, you can get three perks on each card which means you could have the absolute speed god if you really wanted to. And if you want to put the time in, that's great. You don't have to, and you can still win without having those bonuses. In fact, the cards don't massively do a whole bunch. But if you're like me and you're going to be spending the whole two years on this game until the next game comes out, it gives you something to do, much more so now because of the fact they've made the money much easier. Every time I went into a new series of events, I had enough money to buy a new car and upgrade that car and get that car to a level in where I wanted to actually use it. I won the events and some cases I didn't win the events and a lot of people are complaining that you have to replay the events to upgrade your car to try these events again and again let me tell you that that my friends is how it's always been. Replaying events gets you money. It doesn't mean you have to pay them 50 million times but a couple of times and that's just the way it is. I personally think that every series of events you do you should have to play one older race. That in my mind is the bare minimum of what I want to be doing. So when it comes down to it, Payback is a fantastic game and I love it. So much so that I've actually put it into my top five Need for Speed games of all time. And let me tell you, the list includes amazing titles. I cannot stand numerical ratings for reviews, so that's not what you're going to get at the end of this video. But I am going to give you pointers on screen, which tells you pretty much my thoughts on Need for Speed in bullet point form. And it gives you a good idea of what I think needs work and what doesn't. Is it the best racing game ever made? No, it's not. But this generation, I've got to say, it's definitely up there. Payback tries a lot of new things. It has a lot of fan service for the people that actually love this series. But I do feel it is going into the direction to be easier and easier, just so everybody has everything unlocked at the start, like Forza, for example, which Need for Speed has never been about. But it seems like that is kind of happening, unfortunately. We have a written review over on the website, The Nobeds, if you want to check it out, link in the description below. It goes into a lot more detail in the story and the characters, that sort of thing. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to smash like, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you guys in the next video, which I'm going to tell you is probably going to be payback. Peace. Oh,